Hi, this is Jeff Frick and the Cube Silicon Angles uh, office in Palo Alto. We've got some breaking news. I'm here with John Furrier, a founder of Silicon Angle. John, we just read that uh, Google's first acquisition is coming through of 2014, $3.2 billion in cash for Nest. What does this mean? First of all, it's a great news for Google. I think Nest is a startup that made a thermostat that some are calling the future of uh, Internet of Things. Internet of Things, essentially a connected device that does things on the internet with an IP address, in this case a thermostat that can be programmed. And so I think the big story here is it's only a three, four year old company concept to market and you know, to sell for $3.2 billion in cash makes it a very, very rich deal for the founders and their team. Certainly a new talent for Google which is making its bones uh, from a search engine to Android phones to really going into a much more larger marketplace of Internet of Things, Google Glass, self-driving cars. This is one of those 10x moonshot-like projects that fit into the mainstream of Google. So why Nest for the layman? What appears to be a relatively simple device providing a relatively small service is this such a big opportunity. Well, this speaks to the market opportunity of what's happening in society today, and that is the Internet of Things, or the Industrial Internet, as General Electric, or GE, calls it. And that is, is that everything is being connected. And really, I look back at 2007 as that seminal moment of the iPhone to consumerize it. A phone connected, everyone's connected. But if you go look at a tech industry like Cisco and others, the Internet of Things has been happening really since there's been an Internet connectivity. So anything with an IP or Internet protocol address is now connected one of them being a thermostat. So the marketplace for connected devices is going to be thermostats, toasters, refrigerators, anything with a sensor, anything with a connection will be connected to the internet. That's the market opportunity, and this is going to be a huge space. So you're going to see everything starting to be radically disrupted with the access to internet, computing technology, certainly cloud, mobile, and software is the key to success here. So where do they go next from being able to know what the temperature is in your house, they've got now an IP address directly into your house. They already have those with your computer and your iPad and your telephone. How is this one different? And then where are they going to go next with it? Well, I think the market opportunity is clear. Internet of Things this is the future for the world. Um, I think the business opportunity for Google in particular is that this is the home. A thermostat represents one element of a connected home device. Anyone with a large family like ourselves at the Furrier household or other families, or even if you're living single, you have computers in your house. Some have multiple laptops. You have uh, cable. You have now uh, TV. You have access points. So if you think about your home, everything will be connected. That's going to require a whole new set of software services low power, more connectivity, more throughput. This is going to radically change the user experience and the expectations of the service. So Google could have that thermostat that could also be an internet access point. It could also be a, a balancer between signal, managing your Instagram, managing your AT&T bills. Everything, all those things are now possible for Google. So this is just a more of a mainstream high-tech device they could put in their arsenal with Google Glass, self-driving car, your search engine, all about personalization in the connected home. So what about kind of the dark side, which is the privacy issues? Because as, as there's more and more access to more of my activities and everything I do now is, is easy to be seen and easy to be read and easy to be exposed, is there going to be pushback from consumers about letting just another point of presence into their homes? There is going to be a freak out section of this whole entire announcement. I'm going to give it a few days to kind of battle down. You're going to see a huge argument around the policy, the privacy. Will this Nest thermostat be programmable? Can I see anything? If I have a Nest device, is it snooping? Is there privacy? How do I know if I'm a consumer? These are the questions that everyone is going to be asked. Do I want a Google thermostat in my house, even to begin with? That's going to be a whole other question. That's the business challenge for Google. Yeah, and it, and it, it brings up just the, the very specific issues around smart metering and, and, and some of the uh, IP intersection into utilities hasn't gone so smooth. So has Nest cracked that? Have, have they done a better job than some of the horror stories we read about smart, smart meters? Well, if you look at uh, some of the, the products and technologies coming in this area, I've talked with the CEO and chairman of GE in, in Chicago this past year, and you're seeing things around the Internet of Things, the industrial Internet, where these connected devices are adding major value, billions of dollars of value. I talked to the chair, vice chairman of United Airlines, and he told me that you know a small 1% savings just billions of dollars in just gasoline and, uh, and charges. So you're seeing this technology being very relevant. The, the issue is, is ease of use. The guys who built the Nest are the same guys who built the iPhone. 
and that is about usability. So you're looking at the usability of devices that are connected to the internet, making them usable for humans, not for just for geeks. So this is why this space is hot. Look at the internet of things to be more user friendly. And Larry Page gets that. Larry Page lives in Palo Alto here in our town. Um, they're buddies. I'm seeing them in there all the time, hanging out with the Nest folks. So he's very much aware of it. I'm sure Larry's house has Nest in it. I'm sure he sees the future. He's kind of a geek himself. So I, I think he saw the opportunity to take this off the table and getting a talent in Tony and the team over at Nest. This is clearly an accu hire at a $3.2 billion cash deal. What are you seeing on the uh, internet today as the story has broken and you're watching some of your social channels that you monitor? What are some of the things that you're seeing come across the wire? Well, I think, I think you're seeing a lot of the folks um, take some of the analysis like it's obvious, it's a huge deal, it's cash, Larry Page is involved, this is a, coming from the top. This is a game, game changing statement. This is a, a statement from Google that this is something mainstream that they like. It fits into their wheelhouse of what they call a 10x project, one that was going to create and kind of be what they call a moonshot, one of these deals where it's going to set the agenda for the future. Certainly it does. Usability and Internet of Things is one. That's the easiest commentary. You're seeing some of the low IQ journalists go there. And you're seeing some of the more smarter journalists and commentary going, oh, okay, Internet of Things, putting that together. And I think you're starting to see the real smart alpha geeks go, hey, privacy. What about the packet level? How's it going to work in the home? So you're going to start to see a range of commentary from, oh, wow, huge deal. What does it mean? And this is going to play out beautifully for the technology industry, in my opinion. Great move by Google. I give them props for that. So one, one more thing, though, John. You know, Google has had a, a lot of different product innovations they've taken out. And, and really, most of their hardware-based innovations haven't been that successful. They had a, an AV uh, device, a little circle with a little... Uh, colorful wrap. I don't even remember what it was called. They've got the Chromecast out there now, which is a $35 substitute for Apple TV that just really hasn't got great pickup. So with a lot of very successful companies that are successful in a category, uh, they find it harder to execute well in their hardware space. $3.2 billion. They're obviously planning for success. What, is it, what does it take for them to build successful large businesses outside of their core? Um, well, they've had, they've had struggles in the past, but they've had some successes. Obviously, Gmail's one that grow organically, and but they've had a lot of misfires. But Google's not 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 stupid. They know uh, money when they see it. Nest was clearly off the platform in terms of in the early adopter. The folks inside the inside the the industry saw Nest as a huge success. They saw that Nest cracked the code on usability, making software at the heart of the value proposition. Taking a fifty dollar device, fifty dollars in bill of material costs, turning it into a high value add product for consumers that's usable. That's about software, and that's the key to success here. So Google grabbed it. Now, what, what you see Google doing is doing things like YouTube. YouTube was critically acclaimed. Some saying, oh, this is great. What the hell is video, consumer-generated media? And oh, we overpaid for, for, uh, for YouTube. YouTube turned out to be one of the best acquisitions in, in Google history. Nest is along those lines. Look at Nest to be the YouTube for the Internet of Things. What YouTube was for video and media, Nest will be the, the, the beachhead, the place where Google starts building up and adding their additional resources, and, and Google should really take this to the next level. They have all the assets, and Google is a deep powerhouse when it comes to writing real software, and they've proven it with Google Glass, self-driving cars, the list goes on and on. Those guys have their act together when it comes to software. So let's talk about a little bit different challenge, that, and, and uh, the Cube has done a great job of covering the Internet of Things, and one of the items that have come up in, in a number of those interviews is uh, basically the IP system. And when they initially set up IP addresses, it really was never intended to be, or they didn't perceive it to be to the scale of the Internet of Things. So now when you start adding all these devices, and then you get into factories and, and all these sensors and, you know, the proverbial GE uh, jet engine, you know, what are, what are some of the next technical challenges that have to be overcome as fundamental as, say, an IP address system for the Internet of Things to start to realize its promise? What's the next one that's going to be uh, taken down? Well, I think, first of all, you need uh, actual physical addresses, and, and one IPv6 is promising there. Um, I think the naming infrastructure in general is a challenge, but, but you're going to see workarounds to that. And so I think virtualization, virtual addresses, you're seeing all kinds of new software being developed. There's, there's workarounds to that, but ultimately you have to have an addressable 
unit of physical access, whether it's a MAC address on the hardware or an internet protocol. So you know, that ultimately is going to be worked itself out. I think you're going to see two levels of an innovation, one kind of under the covers, encapsulated away with software so the users don't even see it, and one that's going to be publicly debated along the lines of ICANN and DNS and IPv6. These are the kinds of things that you're going to see. So, so I think we're in a good spot, still scarcity in terms of that, but not a real uh, critical path problem. Uh, you know, the advances in software will overcome that, in my opinion. So last question, any, any time a big uh, rock drops in the pond and, and sets off $3.2 billion waves uh, in, in a number of directions, right, it's going to have an impact on the market. So it's going to have an impact on existing companies that are out there. It's going to have an impact on venture capitalists and where they put their next dollars. What do you see as kind of the short-term impacts of this event on some of the uh, companies and, and ecosystem that, that are out there right now? I think it's going to be a big impact. Obviously, $3.2 billion in cash wakes everyone up. That gets a lot of attention. It's a cash deal. Larry Page, obviously, you know, close to Tony here in the Palo Alto area in Silicon Valley. So, you know, they know each other. So it's still a great deal. Great liquidity, great wealth creation for Nest. Congratulations. I think, in general, this is going to open up a huge battlefront in the, in the tech business around the home. And this is, this is an area that's waiting for disruption. We're seeing it going back a decade or two around the phone companies owning the last mile, they call it the local loop, internet connectivity. That battle's been fought and won and lost in, in, in Washington, D.C. You're seeing companies like Google leading the way. What Google's doing has been fantastic. They got free Wi-Fi in downtown Mountain View. They're doing the fiber project in Kansas City. Google is going, doing everything they possibly can to just inch by inch move the ball down the field to create internet freedom. And ultimately, freedom creates innovation. The more you open things up, the more value is created. So I think this is the beginning, possibly, of a whole new generation of devices where it's easy to use, where end users can compute and have fun and configure their homes. I think that's the opportunity. If you just think about the complexity in today's home, I mean, our family, uh, like I said, is a family of four kids, six total in the household. We have a combined, I got to think, half a dozen or at least a dozen different machines, multiple boxes, set-top boxes, access point problems, who's got which access point, security, AT&T bills off the charts with the Instagram. So, you know, modern family in today's world needs a modern infrastructure. And I think what Google's doing here at the beginning of that, and that's the Internet of Things, all things connected. Well, John, thank you. Uh, thanks for the opinion on, on short notice. Again, we're coming to you live from SiliconANGLE Palo Alto office. Big news today, Google uh, spends $3.2 billion cash, that's with a B, on Nest.